We continue with the main operations for rational expressions. We've seen how to multiply and divide rational expressions. Now we want to add and subtract, which requires a little bit more care. Now, the issues for addition and subtraction are the same as for rational numbers. So the rules are, if I want to add two fractions, I can only combine if they have a like denominator. So if I have p over q plus r over q, okay, the q's match, and then I can rewrite this as p plus r over q. If I had subtraction, same idea. If I have p over q minus r over q, the q's match, that's equal to p minus r over q. Now, it's worth inserting a middle step here. I could think of p over q minus r over q as being p over q plus minus r over q. When we work with polynomials, okay, this step is going to guarantee that we're thinking about that minus sign and we distribute correctly through the polynomial in the numerator. So it's going to be a common place where errors occur. Now, let's apply these to a few examples. With regular fractions, if I take 1 fourth plus 6 fourths, the 4 is matching the denominator, so we can combine. I get 1 plus 6 over 4, or 7 fourths. If we take the difference, 1 fourth minus 6 over 4, the 4 is match. We can take the difference in the numerator, so I'll get minus 5 over 4. Now, with rational expressions, same idea. So if I took x over x plus 1, plus x minus 1 over x plus 1, the denominators match. They're both x plus 1, so I can combine. So in the numerator, I'll have x plus x minus 1, or 2x minus 1 over x plus 1. And then there's nothing more I can do with this. So one thing to note here, once I get to this step, I can't split up what I have in the denominator. If I want to do more with this, you would want to do something like long division. But here is where we stop for a problem like this. Now, something to be careful with. Let's take the difference. So I have x over x plus 1 minus x minus 1 over x plus 1. Common error would be to take this minus and just apply it to the x, but not the minus 1. So what I would like to do is to rewrite this as plus a minus x minus 1 in parentheses. We have like denominators, okay, so I could combine, I get x minus x minus 1 in parentheses over x plus 1. Now, we distribute correctly, so I apply the minus sign to each term, which is going to give me a minus x plus 1. The x is canceled, and I'm left with 1 over x plus 1. How do we proceed if the denominators don't match? One approach is to make them match. So, for instance, if I add p over q to r over s, okay, q and s are not matched, then what I'll do is I'll multiply q by s, s by q. Now, to do that, okay, I'm not allowed to just multiply by any old number in the denominator. I'll have to multiply in the numerator by the same number. So that way we're just multiplying by, say, here, s over s, which is equal to 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change our rational expression. Now, multiply by s over s, q over q, we see we have common denominator q times s. So we can combine the numerators. That gives us a formula here. Now, we don't want to memorize the formula because although this does the job, it may not be as efficient as possible. Because after I actually do this addition, I need to simplify to a reduced fraction. Now, what will get us the most efficient possible denominator it's going to be the least common denominator. So this is going to give us the least number of factors to get to a common denominator. Procedure for finding this, this is going to be the opposite of greatest common factor. Here, we take each denominator, factor them completely. Then we're going to use every factor that appears. For each factor that appears, we use the highest exponent that appears. Then that product is the least common denominator. Let's look at some examples using fractions, so numbers. Now, if I take 3 over 5 plus a half, okay, I want the least common denominator, so what I do, here these are completely factored, so our factor is going to be 2 and 5. We're going to use each of these in the least common denominator with the largest exponent. 
and here the exponents are 1. So we're going to have 2 times 5, which is equal to 10. Now, if we wanted to add, what we would do, we just use the procedure over here. We take a look at what's missing. So for the denominator 2, what's missing is a 5. To get to 10, I have to multiply by 5. For the 5, what's missing, I multiply by 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. Now that means for the 3 over 5, okay, we want a 10 down here, I multiply by 2 over 2. For the 1 half, I want a 10 down here, I multiply by 5 over 5. Okay, as so. Now, we're over a common denominator, so we can add the numerator and then we get our answer 11 over 10. If we did this without going to the least common denominator, let's take a look. So for instance, if I had 3 over 20 minus 2 over 30, well, I would just go ahead and multiply by the missing denominator. So here I'd multiply by 30 over 30, here I'd multiply by 20 over 20. When I work that out, okay, what do we get? We have a 600 in the denominator, we have a 50 on top when we do the work. 50 over 600, okay, factor things out, cancel, you get 1 over 12. Now, if we did it with the least common denominator, okay, we factor our 20, that's 2 squared times 5. For the 30, we have 2 times 3 times 5. I want to use every factor that appears, so I use 2, 3, and 5. Highest exponents, okay, the only way I have to be careful is by looking at 2. Highest exponents of 2, so I put that in. So our least common denominator, 2 squared times 3 times 5, which is 60. Now you'll note, okay, how do I get to 60 from each term? Well, for the 20, I multiply by 3. Okay, so for that term, we're going to multiply by 3 over 3. For the 30, we multiply by 2. So I'll multiply by 2 over 2. Both of these are now denominator 60. We do our work, so I have 9 minus 4. I get a 5, and then that goes to 112. So you see that this is a little bit simpler than what we have here. Okay, so in spirit, we're using far fewer factors in this computation. Let's put our procedure for addition and subtraction into a checklist. Our first step, we factor all denominators and our sum or difference completely. Then we use those factors to find the least common denominator. We take each term, okay, we multiply by the appropriate factor r over r, so that our term has, has its denominator, the least common denominator. With all the denominators matching, I can add or subtract using our rules from the previous board. Then, when we put all our terms together, we see if we can simplify. And that gets us to our final step. Now, start out, I'll consider 3 over 2x squared plus 4 over 15x. It's not too complicated. First step, we're going to factor our denominators completely. So here we have 2x squared, so it just factors into a 2 and an x squared. 15x factors into a 3, a 5, and an x. If I use all factors, we're going to have a 2, 3, 5, and an x. The highest exponent on the x is an x squared, okay, a 2. So our least common denominator is a 2, 3, 5, x squared, okay, or 30x squared. Now, how do I go from our denominators to our 30x squared? For 2x squared, we multiply by 15. For 15x, we multiply by 2x. So that tells us our 1 written as r over r for each term. Now I take the 3 over 2x squared. How do I get this to 30x squared? Okay, I multiply by 15, so I have 15 over 15. For the 15x, I multiply by 2x, so we have 2x over 2x. Now I can work. So the denominators are both 30x squared. When I multiply, I have a 45 and an 8x. 30x squareds match, so now I can add the numerators. So I'll have an 8x plus 45 over 30x squared. And then we note this doesn't simplify any further. So we can stop there. For an example of rational functions, okay, let's try 3 over x squared minus 9 minus 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 3. First, we're going to factor each denominator to find the least common denominator. So this is a difference of two squares. I get x plus 3 times x minus 3. This denominator, 
that we could factor that as x plus 3 times x plus 1. Now, for the least common denominator, I use every factor appears with its highest exponent. So here the highest exponents are all 1. We're going to have okay, an x plus 3, x minus 3. We're already using an x plus 3 and an x plus 1. So I have x plus 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 1. It's also worth noting, how do I get from each denominator to the least common denominator? For a first one, I have to multiply by an x plus 1. For the second denominator, I have to multiply by an x minus 3. So that's the blueprint for how we set up our subtraction. Now, for the first term, okay, I'm going to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1. You'll note we get the least common denominator. For the second term, first I'm going to move the minus sign up into the numerator as a plus minus 1. Then to get the least common denominator, we multiply by x minus 3 over itself. Okay, and then here, least common denominator. Now these match, so we can add the numerators. Okay, so we multiply the 3 through, we multiply the minus 1 through. When I simplify, I get a 2x plus 6. Now, for the 2x plus 6, I can factor a 2 out of that to get 2 times x plus 3. It just so happens there's an x plus 3 in the denominator, so we can cancel. That's going to leave me with a 2 over x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then that's all I want to do with that. Now, special case to watch out for, something like x minus 9 over x minus 4 minus x plus 9 over 4 minus x. Here it looks like we have okay, denominators that don't share any terms, but in fact they're just off by a minus sign. So the least common denominator here would not be x minus 4 times 4 minus x. If you know, okay, I could pull a minus sign out of this. We'll have 4 minus x is equal to minus x minus 4. So we have x minus 4 in both of these terms. So the least common denominator is an x minus 4. Okay, I could take the minus sign, push it up to the top. So what we're really looking at here is x minus 9 over x minus 4. Okay, this minus I push to the numerator to give me a minus x plus 9. 4 minus x, I turn into minus x minus 4. So these minus signs cancel. I'm left with a sum x minus 9 over x minus 4 plus x plus 9 over x minus 4. The denominators match. I add the numerators and then we get to our answer, which is 2x over x minus 4. This is just something to watch out for.